There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you might be around the world. Of course, I am Jay Campbell, and you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio, all the way live from Tampa, to Boulder, Colorado, with the lovely Miss Anna Ray. Anna, how are you? Good. Hi. How are you, Jay? It's nice to be here. Thanks for having me. It's awesome to have you. So her bio, she is the founder and CEO and educator of GST Body. She has spoken about holistic body care through fascia around the world, partnered with top athletes, surgeons, physicians, and celebrities, and been featured in various publications from Shape to L, Netta Porter to the Wall Street Journal Baby, the W-S-J, who doesn't know the Wall Street Journal? But before we get into <laughs> like exactly. before we, uh, actually, the young kids don't know the Wall Street Journal, but that's, that's, that's not a conversation <laughs> today. Anna and I had a very pleasant conversation off air for all of you guys today. We were talking about a lot of pressing things, but as I've been doing on the Jay Campbell podcast this year, because we are living in an amazing reality, um, you know, but obviously your perspective may be happening glass full or half empty. Uh, so I've been asking my guests, and again, it's today is Wednesday, June 26th for the purposes of this podcast. And I don't know when this is going to run. I think this is going to run in August at some point, but are you a buyer or a seller of mankind as we move into the next three to five to 10 years? <laughs> oh my gosh. It's a really good question. You're on the spot. It's a little bit out of my realm, but am I a buyer or seller of humanity in this next 10 years? Yes. Okay. I would say that I am, I don't know. I don't think that I want to buy and sell in human trafficking. I'd say I'd really <laughs> like to just play. What I want to do is re-economize and put the value where it's supposed to be which is on soulful, meaningful, eternal things rather than shallow, um, misplaced, um, fragile things. I want to add things of substance. And so I'd like to change the commerce to not buying and selling, but putting value into things that people don't value anymore. That's a good answer. That's nobody's given me that answer. I mean, I phrase it in different ways sometimes, but it's a weird time, right? I mean, you know, you and I were talking about AI. So or yeah, we were talking about it's, AI off there. It it, it 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 comes down to whether you put an emphasis on your spiritual evolution or you don't. And if yeah. you don't, you know, if you don't put an emphasis on spiritual evolution, which is obviously to us doing, you know, inner contemplative, introspective, meditative work. For some people, that's just sitting in nature without television or phones or Bluetooth. But you know, if you don't do those things and you know, and make a, you know, a, a focused, you know, consistent effort day in and day out to do those things. The distractions of technology and modernized living today will completely overwhelm you. And I would argue that the great majority of people today are overwhelmed because they don't That's take right. the time to do those things. And most people will say, well, I don't right. have the time, right? I think it's mostly where your mirror is focused, right? Where is your, are you using your insight? Are you looking inward? Are you going on the journey inward? Or are right. you looking at foresight and always looking for future things and sure. things outside of yourself? And I think right. all it doesn't really take much of a discipline as much as it takes just reorientation of what is the mirror that you're reflecting? What are you, are you wanting to be of the world or are you wanting to create an inner world that has sanctuary and communion? And, you know, so it's really, it can be very simple. And I think that it's just that people are, they're meeting hollow life, right? When you constantly look outside of yourself and out into the world around you for your value, for your mission, for your purpose, for your identity, 
it's hollow. There's yeah. nothing of substance. There's nothing of depth. There's nothing actually to grab onto. And so we are hungrier than we've ever been. We're more bankrupt than we've ever been. We're more um, disconnected to source and self, which leaves, leaves you kind of listless and purposeless. And I think that that's what's happening in the, you know, uh, I, was, I sometimes talk about like the, there's a worse pandemic than the one we just lived through. And that one is the one that we continue to live in, in the sickness of like mind, right? Where we can't really go and find clarity and purpose. And, you know, we're so busy bickering and bipolar in our, you know, binary ways of thinking. And we're so defensive and deflective. And rather than being like, whoa, 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 <laughs> we have a brain here. We have a consciousness. There's another way. There's another way to be. And I love that. I love, I, that. I love that answer. Yeah. yeah, no, I love that answer. Um, holographic it's just reality. It's just starting from the body, right? Like, I feel like yeah. another thing that we're up against is that we're in the age of Aquarius where we're so stuck in our mind. We're so yeah. stuck in the intellect of data and of, yeah. you know, analytical analysis and facts and science and there's, we're missing this whole other softer side of Sears, the softer side of soul. And yeah. I think it starts with the body, which is why I love what I do is because it is all about using your body as the source from which to change experience, to change reality, to change, you know, your trajectory, your spiritual trajectory. I love all that. Um, I, you know, you were talking about, you know, holographic, you know, I, I like to call it, we're birds of a feather, like I said off air, but um, I call it holographic reality. Whereas, you know, people, because as you said, they don't go in, they don't go inward. They're not again, doing this inner work or meditation or contemplation or introspection. And, you know, so many people hear the word meditation these days and they just instantly go into like some sort of a you know, reaction and rejection because it's like, I can't do it, bro. And it's like, it's like meditation. anaphylaxis. It, like people have anaphylaxis shock to meditation. That me meditation oh, is what I can't do that. I just can't do it. Meditation is literally just sitting in stillness in your backyard. You know, it doesn't have to be any specific thing. It's like you said, you know, shutting off the mind, mm -hmm. allowing yourself to think, you know, about nothing or living in the, you know, in the, again, in the, in just the ever present moment. But you know, to, to, to liken it to what you and I are talking about today, it's, you know, obviously you're here to talk about fascia and stuff, but like, you know, I actually work with or have worked with, I, I, it's crazy because my mind, I'm still, I've been in Tampa now for a year, but I've been working with a deep tissue ART technician oh, for yeah. 27 years. Okay. Yeah. And her name's Kathy Martinez. Shout out to Kathy, but she's, you know, back out in LA. My wife still sometimes flies back to see her. I haven't well, seen her move. If you find but, a good one, keep her. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I, but I'm always telling people that it's, you know, very, very important to work the fascia and to, you know, get rid of that fascial adhesions and, you know, just, I mean, obviously body work and, and, and deep tissue and all that kind of stuff, you know, goes hand in hand, but, you know, you're here to really talk about, um, you know, the importance of fascia. And can you kind of just like, you know, let people understand, maybe even yeah. just give, I mean, I have a pretty advanced audience, but, you know, just talk about like what fascia is. All know, right. I'll do my my best to keep it simple. Keep sure. it the kiss letter, the kiss kiss rule. Keep it simple, yep. stupid. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, so fascia is like a body tissue. It's not like a body tissue. It is a body tissue, but it's kind of akin to help the people understand who are not in the science mode. It's akin to saying my shirt is made of cotton. It's a fabric that wraps around and holds your body together and gives shape. Um, and this fabric, there's different types. You know how you wear Gore-Tex to, you know, high performance Gore-Tex if you're a mountaineer and you wear cotton, which is everyday casual, keeps you cool, but it's, you know, kind of rugged. There's different types of fascial tissue in your body. So your myofascia, which is probably the one you always are familiar with and that massage therapists dig into, yep. the myofascia is the fabric of your muscular skeletal system. But right. then you have your, um, uh, like, uh, interstitium, which is a different type. And then you have your viscera, which is a type of tissue that's like satin that wraps around your organs and helps with your motility and your digestion and your microbiome. And so fascia as a tissue is really crazy because it's not well studied. It's just now coming on the radar and it has extensive information and benefits to our health. 
What makes fascia most significant, though, is not looking at it from an isolated tissue, but looking at it from a comprehensive body system. Just like your digestive system has organs that you eat in your stomach, it moves to your upper intestine, your lower, your spleen, your kidney, everything like works together. And you have a metabolic process and those organs help to organize that system. Fascia organizes into what's called your body's connective tissue system. And it comes complete with its own organs. These organs are not massed organs, like a heart that's big and round and two lungs that are big and round. This kind of organ is actually deeply layered, almost kind of like layers of um, rock, sedimentary rock. You, it's, not rock it's not rock in the analogy of feeling, but it is rock in terms of how it's kind of poured. If you picture like having a white paint bucket, yep. fascia, and you put some red dye in it and stir it, you would see how the striations and the movement of fascia is wrapped in and through your white paint. And so that's kind of the way it looks in your body. And that's why it's been missed for so long is that it used to be seen kind of as superfluous tissue in anatomical dissection. Um, but also what's interesting is that like about 70% of fascia is eroded the moment that you die. When rigor mortis sets in, we lose most of the like high quality and high um, intended aspects of fascia. And so it's been really hard to study in a cadaver when it's a living tissue. And the reason is, right. is that your connective tissue system has many functions. It's a movement system, right? It helps you create the movement of your athleticism. It is a sonic system. It carries the vibrations in your body. It's a sensory system. It actually has got more nerve ending or more sensory nerve endings than any other tissue. It's what gives your body its sense of consciousness. That's why maybe you've heard the kind of idea that fascia is your organ of body consciousness, the way that the mind is the body of or the organ of brain consciousness. Yep. And so there's these two sides, but fascia literally has an organ that I'm sorry, the connective tissue system has fascial organs that wrap around and are involved in every other body system, endocrine, lymphatics, vascular. Um, and so it becomes this really significant way to come in and start to address whole body health with one system rather than parceling it out and having all of this kind of, I love, I was reading some of your um, stuff and I love that you refer to it as you know, sick care versus health care, yeah. that our system is really broken. And I think it's because we um, are dissecting everything and diagnosing everything. And that's a very much like scattered myopic way of dealing with health rather than obviously that integrated. And so fascia gives us a literal new view of the body. The body is not what we thought. It's not how it works. And it's a really kind of beautiful frontier. So that's what I do. And that's what fascia well, is. That was a, that was a, that was a good, not not that long-winded, somewhat long-winded way of explaining fascia. <laughs> but I, you know, for the audience, it, I mean, it was, it was the, the best fascia breakdown on the Jay Campbell podcast. And this podcast has been going for eight years, so that's a oh. pretty good accomplishment. So congratulations for that. Um, but from that, to say um, fascia is amazing because, like you said, there's different levels of fascia, different fascia systems, but. Um, there's so much connectivity and cellular, you know, I like to use the word bioenergetics, but the, the bioenergetics of fascia is, is incredible, right? Like, I mean, it's so much trauma, pain, uh, you know, physical uh, conditioning. I mean, everything is bound up into the energetics of the actual muscle tissue and well, of course, yeah. all the, yeah, all of the connective tissue. So I think it's a fascinating thing. That's pretty much why you're here today to talk about it, because again, I've never talked to a specialist like yourself. Oh, but, you. you know, I've always found that it's a fascinating topic and, you know, just working with my body um, therapist, or again, Kathy Martinez, the ART person, and by the way, she also does cranial sacral. Oh yeah. Right. So, so after, after she, you know, you know, unties you, right. And, and beats like, the living hell out yeah. of you. Yeah. She then clears, you know, Your the bad juju. That's great. Right? That's exactly what you need. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing, but I've always just been fascinated, you know, cause I would ask her a lot of questions that she would be working on me. And again, she worked on me, knock on wood for 27 years. And then, you know, she, I don't think she watches my podcast, but if she does, you know, I always You're giving her great credit. Out. And I think that working professionals need the credit that they're due because they're really, oh, there's a lot of practitioners, but there's. She's so <laughs> humble. You know, I, I mean, there was a time, you know, before I became who I am now, where I was always like, hey, I'm happy to promote you. I, you know, how can I? And she's like, nope, I'm good. You know, I have a perfect number of clients. I don't want more. You know, I'm very, so choosy. Funny. Yeah. I'm very choosy. Very choosy in who I work with. 
you know? Yeah, I love those people. What I yeah. love what you said is that the, you know, bio and um, energetics, which is yeah. literally fascia in its greatest. I use the term fascia and connective tissue system interchangeably once people understand sure. that they build to a big system because it helps the overall yep. discussion. But what you're saying is in its greatest facility, the connective tissue system is your body's smart grid. It is your energetic platform on which all of your bio ener energy is moving, electromagnetic, electrohydraulic, um, electrochemical. It's all woven into the fibers of your fascia. And it's like a smart grid on the planet that regulates total body energy. So you know how you have like high voltage energy coming in, like loading when you're heavy lifting and when you're doing workouts or when you pick up your kid or when you're, okay, that's called high voltage loading. It's very high stress on the body. Then you have low voltage, which is my heart is beating and setting off an electrical current. And fascia is in the background modulating these energies so that your body is energy efficient. And when you have blockages in your fascia, your body becomes less vital, less energetically real, if you want to say it that way. Um, anyway, so I like that term, yeah. bioenergetics, uh, because that's what fascia does. It just happens on all levels of physiology. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing stuff. I mean, to really understand the fascia and, 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 and again, just like I said, you know, and I know, you know, this, but there's, I mean, there's a lot of trauma, you know, that we collect, you know, inside that the inner workings of all that, you know, over time, especially the more, um, active, you know, the more we're constantly working on our external physiques and stuff like that, you know, over time. And then obviously just people that, you know, change their physiques by dropping body fat or becoming, you know, more pliable or adding muscle. You know, I've always found it fascinating, like with world-class athletes, like the, the amount of work that they have to put into. All right. Well, so like, you know, I was talking about like with world-class athletes, like the difference between a long and a short career is actually tuning your fascia and yep. not having your fascia, you know, worked on, or actually just, again, just within the whole conditioning. I mean, there's a lot to that, right? You, yes. you know, can you, talk, can you kind of talk about that? I mean, obviously your second yes. point here is motion is medicine, but yeah, you know, kind of, leading you into that from a, in a way that people can understand. Well, let me back up the conversation for a minute because I think right. that fascia, like I said, has a, has a new way of re kind of evolutionizing or evolving our ideas of body and, and, and care and motion. And so when sure. we look at what fascia is saying is that motion is one of its greatest influencers. It's actually how it remodels the body and lays down new cellular structures. Movement, therefore, becomes way more important than just getting your workout in or setting aside the time to body build or to like kind of objectify our bodies. Motion actually becomes as important as our nutritional requirements. What is sad is that in the last, you know, 100 years, we have done very little to reevaluate our movement practices. So movement through fascia is a full like jump in our evolution and our understanding. We've spent the last hundred years re-identifying better ways to eat, how to refine our nutrition, optimizing our diets. And we have not done the same due diligence on our movement practices, on our biomechanics, on the methods that we use to extract movement and engage with movement in our bodies. And Fash is asking us to do something that's really radically different. We have done a lot of due diligence in evolving our concepts of diet and nutrition and what we yes. eat. And we've kind of yep. been, okay. We have not done the same due diligence in our movement. We basically right. have marginalized our movement down to counting how many steps you have. Can you get in your 30 minutes at the gym? Can you get your strength up? And we have not been like, what are the nutritional elements in movement? What is the science behind movement? I said fascia is 70% water, 30% fiber. Okay. And what this means is that when you move, you're more like a water balloon being hurled through space than you are actually sticks being tossed through the air. Right. And when you look at this, we start looking at movement and a lot of our biomechanics are actually harmful to fascia. Our right. principles like teaching solid core, flattening your back and holding your core rigid, trying to pull your shoulders back and down as training. And the reason that is, is that our biomechanics is based on a solid body model. We look at the body and we're like, muscles are pulleys and bones are levers. And this is how we like identify what good movement is. And this is the engineering for that structure. And fascia comes in and says, whoa, whoa, whoa. 
it's actually not the science that we're supposed to be in. We're not supposed to be in solid mechanics. We're supposed to be in fluid dynamics. And we are more pumps and tubes and fluid than we are sticks and pulleys. And so when we start looking at how fascia wants to move, what are the ingredients and the elements that we need for some movement to be vital and healthy and keep our fascia in good condition, it follows very different rules. And so ironically, a lot of the things that we do in our exercise actually damages fascia in our modern day lifestyle damages fascia. And then we have to go back and try to get the massage and get the therapist and get the help. And, and I keep telling people, if we just don't take the shit into our bodies, when it's, when we, you know, diet, just stop eating the crap and you'll be 50% better on your diet. And I want to tell people, if you just stop moving like crap, you don't have to worry about all the therapeutics to keep your fascia yeah. from being hurt. And so that's kind of the roundabout way of saying that fascia is asking us to really reevaluate and evolve our concept of movement, how we analyze it, what science we're using to apply to it, and then what we do during our days that qualify as nutritional movement. If someone told you to go out and eat a thousand calorie or a 5,000 calorie meal once a day, you'd look at them and say, that is the stupidest diet experience. But we say, go to the gym and get an hour of cardio every day. And you're like, that's like a binge eating in yeah. our, in our workouts. And so fascia likes microdosing of movement throughout the day. It does love stretching and, but stretching to fascia is also strength. So you don't have to go in and do strong, you know, strength building in the same way that focuses on muscles. If you focus on fascia for your conditioning, and that's why fascia is so good for like longevity in your athletic right. pursuits is because it makes it rubber bands and keeps you hydrated and fluid in your motions, lubricates you. Um, so it just asks some really different things in our training um, that I think kind of goes against hardcore rules of conditioning. How, how I mean, we'll get into your story, but how, I mean, how did you get into understanding fascia? And it's a really good question. The whole, the whole differences of this stuff. Yeah. So I was 18 and I felt like I was in a body that was 80 and that's without hyperbole. Like it was literally my symptoms were like I was 80. I had achy bones and achy like muscles beyond. I'd feel like I had done the hardest workout in my life. Like you can't put your shirt on or you can't sit down on the toilet because your legs are going to give way. And I would have done absolutely no workout. And I'm like, why am I so sore chronically? And then I had di um, digestive issues that were like, you know, misdiagnosed over and over again. Like I had Crohn's and I didn't have Crohn's. And then my colostomy came back and... So, and then one of my symptoms was, um, the scariest one was my lungs. So I would go and I was a runner at the time. I loved to go and exercise and I would run through Golden Gate Park and feel great. Well conditioned, like a marathon runner. I was running like seven, seven and a half minute miles for me. That's pretty darn good. And I was like, okay, I'm feeling great. And I would go out and do the exact same run two days later. And I felt like a 10 pack a day smoker and they'd give me inhalers and they'd give me asthmatic, you know, uh, bronchial um, enhancers and nothing hap would work. And so I went to all these professionals trying to find out what was wrong. Cause I wanted to be a dancer. I wanted to actually have a professional career at dancing and I couldn't do it. And so, um, you know, the Western world was very diagnosis and they came up with nothing. They kind of narrow in the thing and specialize and specialize. Right. And I'm like, but all of these symptoms that I had, my depression and my insomnia, they were all related. I'd have a yeah. flare up in one, the other one would show up. And so I was a Pilates teacher. I was a yoga certified teacher. I had, I've done a lot by 18. I had had a lot of body input knowledge and I'm like, something I'm doing is wrong. And so one night I just remember being like, okay, am I, you know, is it muscle? No, I don't think this is muscle. I'm like, is this skeletal? I don't know. Do I? And I was like, could this be fascia? And I had taken one workshop in a Pilates course on fascia and that really was my tip off because I'm like, it has to be something other than what I've been trained in, which is muscular, skeletal, you know, no. uh, physical therapy type stuff. And sure enough, um, 25 years later, um, fascia, I took a deep dive into the world of fascia. And at the time, it was only really known through manual therapists. Sure. It's kind of like you could only get fascia work by someone working on you. And I found that it was not that effective for me because whatever I did in a therapy session would be gone within two days of me dancing. I would lose all the gains that I made. I'm like, I can't afford to go enough. And I, you know, can't do it often enough to be able to make a significant difference. And I'd roll on rollers and do my own therapy. 
So cut to the fact that's what kind of led me down. I'm like, there's something I'm doing and I'm a dancer. And then I started looking at all my disciplines of, of movement. And I'm like, there's these, there's these things that we're taught that are fucking me up. Pardon my language. Yeah, that's okay. And I was like, so what is it? Why, why is this causing this? And it led down to what is what I do. GST. It's a totally different biomechanics for movement. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so I mean, we could talk about GST, but maybe, you know, talk a little bit about your daily exercise routine and, and how you, you know, train the fascia. Great. That, you know, ir irrespectively of like, you know, somebody who just goes to the gym and That's lifts right. weights and does 20 minutes of cardio. Great. So there are, I try to simplify this for listeners. There are pretty much because fascia is fluid and it follows like hydraulics. You have to understand one thing about the structure of fascia. Fascia is formed in tubes, micro tubes into my, more macro tubes like the fascial sleeves around your muscles. And all of these tubes are woven together in like a pattern. And if you think about the way fascia functions, it, fa it functions like a um, hydraulic, you know, a syringe where you push and pull the plumber and the water moves through. These fascial tubes literally contract and traction, compress and traction like a syringe and move you through. All of your anatomy is built upon these three actions, which is called compression, where you push the water through the tube, traction, where you draw the water out, and then rotation, which is a really important um, thing to fascial health, is rotation. And so these are the three elements that we start to apply to full range body of motion. I wake up in the morning and the first thing I put my body into is active traction. And then I go in and I compress and do really nice deep things because when you compress the actual shape of your body, it decompresses fascial tissue, okay? It's a decompressor. Like think about a thing of dough, uh, a ball of dough with a bunch of M&Ms on it. And if yep. I stick my fist in the dough, the dough will spread the M&Ms around the circumference. And that's literally what's kind of happening in fascia when you smush into it like a body worker pushes, the yep. fibers actually loosen. And so I like to tell people that these three actions are what detoxify fascia. And it's literally like taking a hand wash sweater, dunking it into a sink. When you dunk it, it's compression and it loosens the fibers. When you pull the sweater out and all the water pulls down, that's called traction. And then you take the sweater and you wring out all of your toxins. And so you would like to do those three actions every hour for approximately 30 seconds to a minute as you're microdosing snacks of movement. It's almost like having little snacks of movement. Right. Then... If you have fascial problems or if you're a professional athlete or you are, you know, a recreational athlete, you will probably need extra care on your tissue than just daily like floss, brush and, you know, the hygiene, fascial hygiene. Yeah. And when you do that, you need to set aside the time to do some really intense and purposeful traction stretching. It's very different than just hanging yeah. passively from boots or on a table Traction has to have fascial animation. So one of the little bit more scientific sides of this is that fascia animates and contracts like a muscle. Right. It's much lighter in its power than a muscle. So usually muscles will hold hostage the fascial impulse, but we have to restore the fascial impulse. And that is done by these like really specific kind of techniques and movements that allow fascia to have an, a pulse, like a pump and then have flow through the fibers. It's kind of like the vascular system, right? The heart is sucking and pushing blood and then the blood moves. And fascia right. has the way of contracting and, and, and moving and then takes that stress energy and moves the body. So that's how you're supposed to move with fascia in a nutshell. That's awesome. Um, you want to show a, a, like an exercise that sure. you know, any, my audience can, can do on a daily basis? I would love it. Okay, here we go. I'm glad we came down this end. I hope it's not too dark. Nope. So you want to make yeah. life, let me say this before I show it. You want to make life your jungle gym, right? Your body is used to camping down by the, you know, squatting by the campfire, hanging from the trees, pulling back and rotating to shoot your bow and arrow. This is supposed to be layered into our existence. And so you got to look around your house and find places like railings. This happens to be a ladder up to a loft. Fine. I will use it. Kitchen sinks, um, handicap ramps railings, balusters, you're going to start looking around at places that you can hang off of, pull and twist from, and do it on the go. Like you're taking a sip of water, you need to make this happen in your movement. Mm -hmm. So here are the three movements, and I'm gonna show it. If you do these, if you learn these three actions, 
and you apply them all over your life, then you'll start to see a huge difference just in the regular aches and pains, regular flexibility, and the ability to breathe actually as well. It's a great awesome. thing for cardiovascular health. So you're gonna grab all that and put your feet close enough to the surface. You don't wanna be back here because that doesn't give traction. So you come forward and then you're gonna hang back and you're gonna pull active traction, hanging off the bar as long as you can. And then you come back up and you traction and you open and you arch. We must open our front bodies. We are so front body short that all of our organs are overly loaded. Okay, then we pull back again, inhale. And then you come forward and you arch. Now, when you go back, you can do a deeper compression. Okay, the lower you go, the more your bones and joints will spread. It's better for your organs and your um, overall visceral health. And then you arch. And then if you do that, everywhere you go, you can actually start adding rotation where you twist and pull with traction and try to keep your ribs up and lifting. So here we go, traction, last review, compression and rotation. And you can even do track and rotation under traction. If you understand these three elements, you're gonna to start to see in the body that these are the ways that we wash tension and stress from our bodies and our lives, and that you'll start to feel really young and active and fun and pain-free. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty amazing that you just did all of that in three minutes and in perfect uh, balance of the camera angle. You've done this before. <laughs> I must do this before. You've I done this like before. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying not to laugh because I was like, holy shit. Just go she for it. Just go for it. I love when people, here's the thing about fascia work. When you actually do it, it feels so different, but it feels so good. And so I always want people, and podcasts are great for education. They're yeah. not always so great for like instruction and experience. Sure, sure, sure. As soon as people can experience it, they're like, this is life changing. This feels so different. It feels like energy is coming off my body rather than constantly being loaded in. And most of our life is an in-weighted, burdened kind of existence rather than yeah. like, how can I metabolize these stresses? And this is what fascia does. How do I take my loads and my stresses, mental, chemical, or my physical stresses and metabolize them into motion, getting them to free my spirit and free my body. And that's what keeps us you know, elevated in our lives. You're pretty high vibration. You're about as high vibration as I am. I mean, when you were 18 years old, the, your problems were they couldn't diagnose you because you were just high, too high vibration. They didn't like, that's what it is. Is like, there was no way to like, like people who are low vibration, when they see high vibration people get distracted, right? Cause you're so yeah. high energy. Yeah. And I'm the same way. And it took a long time for like my life to realize that it's like, okay, if you don't appreciate that I'm, hyperkinetic and moving all the time and doing this and that kind of like you just did, like, it's okay. You know, you don't have to yeah. like me because I'm high energy or high energy. So like, it's cool for me to sit back and watch, oh, you know, she's just high energy, high vibration, <laughs> high energy. Mean. So, Were but you it's called cool. Spaz because, oh, of course. But I mean, I mean, I'm still like, for example, like I've worked on myself a lot to the point where I can be completely centered and balanced and coming from a place of neutrality. But like when I'm speaking or I'm podcasting or I'm live streaming or whatever, I'm always moving. Yeah. I have to move. Yeah. But you're of probably course, also ADHD, right? I mean, well, it's not, it's, it's, it's it, that's what they want to label us, but it's actually our energy. Right. So if you understand spiral, the spiral of, of, of consciousness, like mm -hmm. high energy beings are constantly in centrifugal energetic yeah. right? so right. when you're centrifugal you're yeah moving and spiraling yeah i mean and if that's, you and that's have what people to... don't understand though no but you know what's so cool is that one thing that fascia can teach you is that if you add that into your life and i like to joke with people i'm like i'm changing the world one body at a time awesome. because i'm like i really feel like if people do spiral movements it completely yeah. changes your entire disposition your countenance 100%. Your ability, your frequency, whatever the word is, it's your whatever. Beingness. Yeah, it's true. It's the spiral, like the twirling dervishes. Yes. Like if you look at any of the really like these spiritual elevated, you know, now here's yeah. a cool thing that you might like yes. to know. Fascia is attached to your end to your um endorphin system, right? The way that the muscles are attached to your adrenal system. Your muscles and your bones are connected, and they're your getaway car. 
And then right. fascia is left over, taking the energy from the adrenal system and then turns it into non-toxic, relaxed state back to parasympathetic. So the reason I'm saying this is that when you want to elevate your beingness, when you want to be more present, you have to be in a non-stress, non-adrenal state. Right. And fascia literally can open your consciousness 100%. by how you work with it. It will put you, it changes your state. Fascia changes your state. And that's what you're looking to do when you want to change and transform your body or your life. You're looking to alter your state. And what's nice is that it's very grounded and real and safer, I think, than sometimes psychedelics. And I'm not yeah. saying I'm against that. I'm just saying there's yeah. other ways to get into that system that create elation and, you know, endorphin response. Well, I mean, the truth about psychedelics, and I'm a proponent and, and, you know, anything for anyone where there's beneficial outcomes, and obviously there's not always beneficial outcomes, but right. the truth about using psychedelics or entheogens or whatever you want to call them is that it is a violation from a standpoint of inorganic versus organic, where you can achieve the same effect from stretching and working your fascia, from deep internal meditation, from breath work, from, you know, I could go on, right? Like, but, 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 you know, when not obviously uh, used outside of moderation and for specific circumstances, and obviously there's always circumstances that, you know, people can find value in theogens, they can find value in MDMA for people that have PTSD. I mean, there's so many different, you know, drugs and elixirs and obviously herbal agents, and obviously again, um, you know, supplements and stuff like that that can be beneficial, but it is interesting because you can do all this stuff naturally. And obviously what you're offering with, you know, I would just call it, you know, obviously GST body and stuff is doing it naturally. You're doing it from an organic point. Well, you're doing it according to the laws of what your body is governed by. Yes. Right. Yes. It's not a foreign entity. It's not but, something inside of yourself, right? It's not but, you ingesting something, hoping to right. have impact. You're like, how, like, I kind of, I like the term biohacking. I yeah. use it differently because I'm like, I biohacking is going inside your body, right. understanding its systems, and then yeah. figuring out what your body needs. Right. And not like, what is this supplement going to do? And what is this supplement going to do? It's like right. biohacking is actually understanding human humanness, whether it's yes. physiology, psychology, or spirituality. You have to understand self. And then you go around and you hack at it. And you're like, what if I do this? What if I calm this? What if I change this pain? What if I, right? It's this act, it's this active engagement. And that's what I think you can live at a bypass, right? It's easy to medicate. It's easy to let yeah. something else do the work for you. Right. And I'm not saying that there's not a place for like science and medication. And, but I'm saying that that should be our last resort. Right. I just had a guy come into me and he had at least 49. And he has had five back surgeries. And he finally said, they're telling me I need another one. And he's like panicked. And he's like, right. I just can't do another one. I'm only 49. And I was like, right. why am I your last right. stop? Like, why right. is this your last stop? This would have, should have been your should first. Should have been your first. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And this is what, mo what you're doing with your podcast is so powerful is you're helping people get information that's not readily accessible, but also people need to change their mindset. There is no quick fix to anything. There's no 30-day diet. There's no the promise. Called, you've got to do your work. Thank you, Jay Campbell. Well, to what you just said, though, about what you were saying in the very beginning, and again, I, we're, we're from the same soul. How's that? Yeah, I do. Uh, I but the, the truth is, is that that person doesn't love and trust himself. That's because right. why is he listening to five different surgeons? Because you and I both know that every surgery was from a different doctor. I don't need to know. I already know. No, that each one is a different doctor. That's because right. I don't listen because those people are at a place where they trust the external That's because true. they're not doing the introspective meditative, you know, inner work as we talked about at the very beginning. And so they're constantly listening to the external shrill voice. That's right. Who has different intrinsic and external motivations themselves, which is That's obviously right. as doctors, they, you know, I always tell people, why would you go to a surgeon and expect them to tell you they're not going to operate? That's right. That's how they make money. I mean, give me a break. Well, you know, I'm going to go to another surgeon. Oh, what well, do you think he's going to give you a different opinion? That's really funny. And it's totally true. You're like, that's what they're there to tell you. You, didn't, you went in hoping that they were going to tell you you didn't need it, you but they're never going to tell you. Right, right, right. It's like, it's like the geriatric people, God love them. 
Mm. And they go to their doctor and they said, but my dad said, I mean, it's like, do you think he's going to tell you something that doesn't involve you exchanging money through benefits or through cash pay that has something to do with the services? I mean, I, you know, obviously we have parents and, you know, I know you experience the same thing I do, but I mean, it's mind blowing. You've been amazing on this podcast today. Um, Gosh, thanks. Let me it's throw some stuff up here for people to find you. Um, oh, wow. Thanks. Yeah. Obviously, gstbody.com. She's also on IG, the Anna Rea of GST. Um, I'll just give you the final final thoughts, and then, of course, I'll sign off. But, like, what would you tell someone today who's, you know, a quote-unquote elite, sophisticated, Jay Campbell, you know, a listening audience, both male and female. I have a large contingent of uh, ladies that watch my podcast now. Thank God. Uh, I was done with the bro world. Um, what would you tell them if they're completely new, completely new to, you know, uh, understanding Fasha? What would you tell, what would be your message to them right now? Do a deep dive because that deep dive is really a commitment to diving into you, diving mm-hmm. into who you are, what's happening inside of you, and you will find untold mysteries and unbelievable opportunities um, for all kinds of change and transformation from the physical through to your mind and emotional into the spiritual. And so just do a deep dive into fascia, start looking it up, seeking it out. Um, and I think that that will lead you to a deeper trust of yourself and a knowing, a deeper knowing into you rather than listening to all experts, including myself. I really want people to start to love and listen to themselves. Your body is your divining rod. It tells you what is good true, right, loving. And if you can really tap into that without the, you know, with and without frou-frou energetics, it's like just, it's simple. And when you go in, you will always be a rich person, a fulfilled, a happy, a vital person. Pammy, you're pretty amazing. I really appreciate you coming on the podcast today. So ladies and gentlemen, all the amazing folks around the world that watch the Jay Campbell podcast is always support the incredible people that I bring on. And I don't bring on anybody these days unless they're an incredible person. And obviously you just saw that in today's podcast. I uh, go to her website, which is gstbody.com or follow her on IG at Anna Rea of GST. And remember, raise your vibration, to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon. Thank you, Jay.